Matthew 7 and 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Now the church has failed to figure this one out. A false prophet is a con artist. Get it? False prophet, P-O-R-F-I-T. Now I've been telling you, and I'm going to keep on telling you, that the church has been running the hugest Ponzi scheme of all time. Now I'm going to connect Bernie TD and Bernie Madoff to Paul, the man with the fur, the man with the hair, Potiphar, BKA, Holofernes, Pharaoh, and ultimately the Pharisee, the father and founder of the Christian church. He is the inventor of this father and son religion, which is the curse of Canaan and the curse of rebuilding Jericho. Now, this is all going to be revealed to you today using the Solomon concept. There's nothing new under the sun. History simply repeats itself over and over and over. Now, let's start with Bernie Teedy. Bernie Teedy, this man was convicted of first degree murder. He was sentenced to 99 years to life. He is currently still in prison at the Estelle unit. In the mid 1980s, a young funeral home director named Bernie Teedy came to the little East Texas town of Carthage. Carthage was just a small town of roughly 6,000 people. A lot of people got very wealthy on oil and gas. Now, the key word is gas. We'll come back to that. There's a lot of widows in town that have a lot of money, but none more so than Marjorie Nugent. It is alleged that Bernie Teedy was running a con on Marjorie Nugent. He picked up a gun, shot her four times in the back, and he buried her in her deep freezer. This man stole the hearts of the people, just like David's son, Absalom. Let's get that in 2 Samuel 14, 25. But in all Israel, there was none to be so much praised as Absalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. Now, this is a picture of the flawless religion we call Christianity. Verse 26, and when he pulled his head, for it was at every year's end that he pulled it. Pulled it means shaved it because the hair was heavy on him. This is a picture of the wolf in sheep clothing, Paul. Therefore, he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. Now, let's go to 2 Samuel 15 and 5. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Now Bernie Teedy, he stole the hearts of the people of Carthage, just like Paul stole the hearts of the people. Now let's go to Acts 20 and 37, and let's see who the church has been kissing. Who betrayed the Son of Man with the kiss? Acts 20 and 37, and they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. Right now, the church has been committing adultery spiritually with a man by the name of Paul. And Bernie Teedy is a picture of Paul, the father of the Christian church. Note that when Marjorie Nugent's husband was buried, she paid $30,000 for a headstone. Now, one of the grandchildren of Mrs. Nugent said verbatim, I think the fatal mistake my grandmother made is she ended up buying a $30,000 headstone from Bernie Teedy. From that moment, he marked her. Within months of meeting at her husband's funeral, get this, y'all, Bernie was full-time at Marjorie Nugent's I. 
popping home, helping her with anything she needed help with, from making her coffee to making sure she was up, she was all right, etc., etc. Now, when the grandchildren would come and visit, she would act like, or presumably, she did not know who they were. And when they would come in the house, they would see pictures of Bernie Teedy everywhere, and they would see no pictures of their father. Now that is all going into something. Let's go to Genesis 41, starting at verse 16. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, that's cows, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored, and leaned flesh, that's going into skinny, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. Now that is going into how the skinny New Testament destroyed the thick Old Testament. Paul is responsible for that. Now your church is clueless. Your camp is clueless. What are they doing with a Bible? What do you have a Bible for if you're not going to read it and understand the hidden meanings? The parables is all a picture of something that is happening over and over and over. Now, the women during the time of Bernie T.D. believed that he was a God. One woman said during his trial that Jesus himself could not convince her that he was guilty. This is the pride of Edom. This is going into Esau. When you think of the name of Esau, what comes to you? You have Esau and you have Saul. That is the perfect blend of the father and son religion we call Christianity. Esau is going into Esau and Saul is going into Paul. The father and son religion is in the very name of Esau. This is why the Bible says God loved Jacob and he hated Esau. Esau is the religion of Christianity. It is the parables. It is the blend. It is the father and son religion. Now let's move on to Bernie Madoff. Now, Bernard Lawrence, Bernie Madoff, was an American financer who executed the largest Ponzi scheme in history, defrauding thousands of investors out of an estimated $65 billion over the course of at least 17 years. Now, the white man is the only man that can pull that type of scam off today. Why? Because people let their guards down. To the white man. And the white man has this power to scheme and to scam simply because he's a picture of Paul in the flesh. Now let's keep going. The scheme collapsed during the 2008 financial crisis when it could no longer attract new investors. And too many people wanted their money at once. Madoff confessed to his wife and his sons and was arrested by the FBI that December. He pleaded guilty to 11 criminal counts in 2009 at the age of 71 and was sentenced to 150 years in prison. His son Mark, who had long insisted he played no role in the scheme, died by suicide. 2010 and his firstborn son Andrew died after a lifelong battle of cancer in 2014. Now there are signs in the sons. Now the first son died 
of suicide. That's a picture of Benjamin. That's a picture of Paul. Paul was the man who destroyed himself. He was like a hitopel whom hung himself when no one would listen to his counsel. And the older son, the firstborn son, Andrew, is a picture of Christ. He's a picture of the son that was made with Bathsheba and David, the son that was born sickly. And that son has to die at the last day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself will cause Jesus to die. The firstborn is the son who will die in the end. Now remember, the Bible says in Exodus 11 that God will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh. And after this plague, Pharaoh will let you go altogether. He will thrust you out. That's going into the killing of the firstborn. That is going into the prophet Esau's peace be upon him. Death at the last day. The two sons are signs. The first son is a sign of Paul who died by suicide. And the second son, which is the oldest, is a picture of Christ who will die at the last day. Now, remember, Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Paul was the thief. He was the embezzler. And he was the killer. He was the con. He was a con. Let's get that story. Because many of you fail to realize what God Almighty was trying to show us in the book of Joshua. The book of Yahshua, Yeshua, or Jesus. This is going to be Joshua 720. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold. Let's pause on that gold for a minute. Now, Bernie killed Mrs. Nugent with a gun. Think about that. In Nugent, you can spell gun. He killed Miss Nugent with a gun is going into the nugget, which is going into the gold. This is going into Paul being Paul. He is the God of Christianity. And Jesus was the supposed son of that religion. And Akon saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment. 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold and 50 shekels weight. And then he coveted them and took them and he hid them in the earth, in the midst of the tent and the silver under it. Nobody knows about what Paul done. Only those who have studied the Bible, only those who have studied the Quran and the Hadiths, we see that there is a prison in hell named after Paul. Now I'm going to get that for you. The name Paul in Arabic is Bulas, the founder of Christianity. Did you know there is a prison in hell called Bulas? According to this Hadith, Amor bin Shuabib narrated from his father, may Allah be pleased with him. From his grandfather, may Allah be pleased with him. From the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the proud will be gathered. On the day of judgment, resembling tiny particles in the image of men, they will be covered with humiliation everywhere. They will be dragged into a prison in hell called Bulas, submerged in the fire of fires, drinking the drippings of the people of the fire, filled with derangement. Book 37, Hadith 2680. Now, Paul is the embezzler. Paul is the killer. Paul is the con man. Paul is the Akon. Mr. I'm locked up. They won't let me out. God Almighty sentenced the wolf in sheep clothing to hell. He is the beast of revelation in the church. And he is sentenced to life without parole, without the possibility to ever get out. God has sentenced Paul to hell. That revelation is made known in this Hadith and the Christian church is on their way. The Christian church was that old woman, okay, that was killed and put in the freezer. Think about it. Burn freezer. Bernie freezer. Think about that for a moment. 
There's one man that's going to burn and there's one man that's going to be free. And that one man that's going to burn for all of eternity is Paul. And that one man who will be loosed, who will be free, is the prophet Isa. If there's one man that knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, is the prophet Isa. He knows God is merciful because God had mercy on the prophet Isa and he allowed him to be free from that prison, from that pit. Remember, Joseph, who was a picture of Christ, was thrown in the pit. Remember, Jeremiah, who was a picture of Christ, was thrown into the pit. Jeremiah was rescued from the pit. Joseph was rescued from the pit. And prophet Isa, peace and blessings be upon him, will be rescued from the pit. He is the Lazarus that was in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man was Paul, who was sentenced to life in hell. The gay man's religion is over. Christianity is dying. It is losing its power from Charles Ponzi himself, from Bernie Madoff to Bernie TD to Sam Bankman Freed. All of these are pictures of the religious scam we call Christianity. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. Thank you.